But this week's economic numbers likely to remind us that the recovery is still fragile. But Nariman Baravish, chief economist at IHS Global Insight, says there may be at least one bright spot. He is in Lexington, Massachusetts, and he has a preview. Nariman, uh, welcome to Bloomberg News. Good to see you again. Where is that bright spot? Well, I mean, the good news is that the activities there, the recovery is in train, shall we say. The worst is behind us. The recession's over. I mean, those are sort of the bright spots. The not so good news is that the economy's still in, in this sort of uh, slow mo kind of recovery. It's, uh, it's gradually sort of picking up steam. Um, we think, for example, the, 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 the third quarter, the quarter we're just about to end, uh, growth will be around 3%. I mean, that's better than the negative 1% we had in the second quarter. So all of this is good news. Uh, and and you know, all the numbers are going to sort of reinforce this notion of a recovery, yes, but a sort of a, one that's, that's got a slow start to it. Well, our, our businesses in particular, are they still not sold on this recovery? Because it would seem so given that continued rise in the jobless number. Absolutely. And I think there is a concern on the part of a lot of companies about the top line growth. And you get quite worried about it. They, they're not going to make big moves, as we were saying earlier, as, 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 as was being discussed in the M&A discussion earlier. They're not going to make big moves unless until they've get, either got a lot of cash or they're confident that that top line growth is going to be there. So they're holding off a little bit. They're, they're being a little cautious. Uh, uh, so I think that, that's it. And that, that plays into the employment story, which is going to continue to look bad, we think, probably for another three to six months. Well, is this recovery going to be stimulus induced or uh, consumer spending reduced or induced? Well, clearly not consumer spending induced in the sense that consumers, as we were saying, have the two, really two headwinds. One of them is the employment uh, issue that we just talked about. Namely, the employment picture is going to look pretty bleak for a while. The other is deleveraging. A lot of households trying to raise their savings, uh, trying to cut back on debt. So this is not going to be a consumer-led recovery. It's going to be led by, as you were saying, the government. But some by capital spending and hopefully, we hope, exports. Well, um, Nariman, we think the, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, but Nariman, as you know, um, consumer spending, uh, it, it has slowed down a little bit and savings are at an all-time rate because people are concerned. They don't know whether or not they're going to be able to hold on to their jobs. Are, are we seeing a, a, at least a little bit of a turn towards something more positive that consumers at this point are saying, I've, I've held on to my money, I haven't spent, I've saved it, but now I want to reward myself now I want to go out and get a big ticket item I mean you I think you've put your finger on something that we've spent a lot of time looking at and talking about which is pent-up demand which is I think your point pent-up demand is there consumers many of them uh, have households and have the money to spend on a big ticket item a, you know a car or, or even a home if they're in the market for a home but they're they too are being a little bit cautious but that pent-up demands there and that pressure will build we can debate about exactly when that pent up demand gets released, but it will be released. So consumers will spend, uh, but you've got, as I said, these sort of other headwinds that'll, that'll sort of balance out a little bit. But, but we have consumer spending, for example, growing at about 2, 2.5% two over the next year. Right. It's, it's not great, but it's decent. Nariman Baravish, the chief economist at IHS Global Insight. Uh, we're going to keep him through the break, and he'll uh, talk to us coming after the break. One of the things I want to get into is housing, and uh, we're going to talk about what that mortgage foreclosure rate is meaning going forward. And we are back with Nariman Baravish, chief economist at IHS Global Insight. He comes to us from Lexington, Massachusetts. Before the break, uh, I mentioned that I wanted to talk about housing. But, uh, Nariman, before we get to that, I wanted to get your reaction to uh, some comments from uh, World Bank President uh, Robert Zellick. He is uh, saying today that he opposes giving more authority to the Federal Reserve, arguing instead that the Treasury is better suited to manage financial crises. I was wondering if you might have some thoughts on that. The, the only counter I would come, uh, come back with is that, you know, the Treasury, the appointments are largely political appointments. Um, uh, not that there's, there's no politics involved in, in Fed appointments, but the point is they're more political than the Fed. And uh, I, I wouldn't want that kind of authority vested in, in an institution where you get the sort of the, the four-year cycle or the eight-year cycle or whatever. You need some stability. You need some continuity. So I don't support Zelik's uh, recommendation here. I think, I think the original view that the, the Fed ought to be doing this is probably 
the saner view, if you will, or the more realistic and the, the better view, right. um, largely because the Fed is less political. Okay. Uh, the stall in real wages, is that still a concern? What, what you might have here, you, you see some Americans who are fortunate enough to still have their jobs, uh, their wages are either stagnant or they have to take a pay cut just to stay employed. Is that stall a concern? It is a concern. It's one of the sort of headwinds, if you will, related to the employment situation. When you've got unemployment rates close to 10 percent, probably going to exceed 10 percent at some point, briefly, uh, then you're not going to get any wage inflation, which is the good news on the inflation front. But the bad news, of course, is that real wages will be stagnant, may even fall for a little bit longer. I think that will eventually go away as the recovery gains steam. But certainly over the next year, year and a half, uh, yeah, real wages are going to be stagnant. There's, I don't think there's any debate about that. Okay, let's talk housing. As I mentioned before the break, sales of existing homes falling last month for the first time since March. The median price of a home falling 12.5% from a year ago. And as you're no doubt aware, millions of homeowners are underwater on their mortgages, meaning that they can't refinance. Is there any good news on the housing front? Well, as you say, the, the numbers over the past month deteriorated after a couple of good months. We're not out of the woods when it comes to housing, and there are a variety of factors playing into it. One is, is in fact, a foreclosure issue, uh, which means that more houses are sort of coming back on the market, which depresses prices. Um, the other is that a lot of homeowners who wanted to sell are now thinking, well, maybe this is a good time to start to put my house back on the market. Well, guess what? That also depresses home prices. So what you've got is continued negative dynamics on home prices. What about the home buyers? Why are they holding off? Right. Well, if you expect prices to go down, you're not going to rush to buy. You're going to wait. So that's what's happening. This is sort of a negative dynamic. So we're not out of the woods yet. I think that'll probably start to improve next spring would be my best guess. Uh, Nariman, we have about 30 seconds left. I wanted to ask you quickly, any danger of a double-dip recession? And if there is, would that be caused by a Fed exit strategy that comes too early or too late? I put a very small probability on a true double dip, which is to say we go into negative territory. I doubt very much it would be triggered by the Fed. They're not going to do anything to damage this recovery, certainly not in the next year. Nariman Baravish of IHS Global Insight joining us from Lexington, Massachusetts. Always good to have you on. Thank you so much. Thank you.